God bestowed many blessings and gifts upon, upon us. Numerous gifts. And these gifts are trust, amana. And he's trying us and testing us to see how we deliver this amana, this trust in this life before we leave it. Number one gift and number one amana and trust and number one wealth we have in this life is faith in God. The blessings of faith. The blessing of knowing God, recognizing God, having a relationship with God, knowing the Prophet wasallam, knowing the revelation, this holy book, being acquainted with this book, reading this book, understanding this book, cherishing this book, this blueprint for the entire humanity, and also the blessings and the ni'mah of the wilaya of Ahlul Bayt alayhim oh. salam The wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Ahlul Bayt that integrates the prophethood and integrates monotheism and tawheed. It's a package. These are three trios. The tawheed, monotheism, nubuwah, prophethood, and wilaya and imamah. The guardianship of Amir al muminin and the family of the Prophet, they work hand in hand. You cannot separate them. If you separate one of them, take one of them away, the building is going to collapse. And therefore, if one acquires the entire dunya, the entire wealth and fortune in this life, but he is not recognizing God, has an, no relationship with God, does not understand God, does not speak with God. This dunya is not going to help him. This dunya is nothing but a toy, a pacifier. When you give your child, little child, a pacifier to pacify him or her, the pacifier does not worth anything. It's worth a dollar. A dollar, no more than a dollar. But this child thinks that he has everything. When you give him this pacifier, this toy, he thinks that he owns everything in this universe. This is us, the human being. We have little property, a business, some money, some jewelry, some cash, some land. We think we own everything. But if we don't have faith in God, then we are bankrupt. We have nothing. God says this life, this entire life, and whatever it contains is nothing but a pacifier. إِنَّمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا لَهْوٌ وَلَعِبٌ Nothing but a play and amusement. Because we're going to leave it and go. Leave it behind. We are not taking this dunya with us. We are on a countdown. The clock is ticking on a countdown to our final destination. And the final destination is so small and so tight. Many of you have seen that place, the qabr, the grave, that you cannot take any belonging with you. You cannot take your clothing. You cannot take your personal items with you. You can't take your jewelry with you. You cannot take your wallet with you down there. You can barely, they can barely put you and your body in that grave. So this life is nothing but amusement and a play. And therefore it's not going to help you if you don't have good relationship with God. This is what we learn during this night, Laylatul Qadr. Some young people ask me, what is the value of faith? What is the benefit of having Iman and faith? What difference it make if I have faith in God? Does it make any difference with someone who does not believe in God, does not have any recognition of God? The answer is very brief. The answer is, when you have real faith, genuine faith, good faith, sincere faith in God, not fake faith, not fake, but genuine, that faith in God is going to make you concentrate and focus more on the hereafter 
and less on this dunya. You're going to be more concerned with the akhirah than the dunya. This is the job, the work, the benefit of having faith in God. It makes you think about your next station. To prepare for that next station. And, and, and focus less and be worried and concerned less about this short-lived life. And the more you are able to think less about this life and to detach yourself from this life and not to be obsessed or attached to this lower life, the more patience you're going to develop. Sabr. The more perseverance, istiqama, you're going to develop. The more sacrifice, sacrifice you're going to develop. And the more love and kindness you're going to develop towards your fellow human being. This is the work of faith. This is when we concentrate less on this life and more on the akhirah. You're going to be, at the end of the day, a better human being. And this is the goal of life, why we are here. If you ask God, why you sent me here? What do you want me to do? What is the goal of me being here on a planet Earth? You are putting me here for 70, 80, 90 years. Why? The answer in this book, the answer says in one word, I want you to be a better human being. That's it. A real human being. Enjoy your humanity, enjoy your human equality, not animalistic equality. You're a human equality. Human equalities are great, but we don't tap into them. We abandon them. Why? Because we are attached to this lower life. So this is the goal. Some people may argue that I am, you know, rich enough, intelligent enough, Wise enough, experienced enough, I don't need God in my life. Why should I? Someone who is hungry, poor, broken, does not have education, does not have good health, does not have family, is not a celebrity. Thousands of people are not following him on his Instagram account. That person maybe needs God. I don't need God. I'm intelligent. I'm a celebrity. I'm an influencer, thousands of people follow me, they know me, they take pictures and selfies with me, I have good health, I have good bank account, good money, good saving money, good career, good job, good family, I have a property, I have everything. Why should I need God? This is what most tyrants believe. Inna al-insana la yatgha ar ra'ahu stagna. When a person becomes tyrant, this is what he believes. He believes that he does not need God. But with a small test, a very small test, he fails. This is an illusion. This is arrogance when we think we don't need God. My friends, in our daily life, not only we need God, we need people around us. The food that you ate tonight, you know how many hands they worked to prepare this food for you from that moment a farmer planted the seeds of this food until it comes to your table. You know how many people? An average of how many people? 150 hands was working to bring this food to you to eat. So you need people. For your food, you need people. For your drink, you need people to help you. For your clothing, for your transportation, for your health care, for your education, to walk. Some young kids, when they get into an argument with their parents, with their mothers, they tell them, I don't need you. I can do it by myself. They start defying their parents. Child who's three years old, he says to his mother, I don't want you. Get out of here. But then after 15 minutes, he wants his mother to come and change his diaper. He cannot change his own diaper. He cannot clean his own self, let alone doing other things. He needs his mother to change his diaper. We are like that child. We think we don't need God, but we need God in every second of our life. 
the bounties, the blessings of the, the help of God is a plenty, abundance upon you. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Every grace, every blessings that you are enjoying today is from God. You are not self-sufficient. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ you are needy, you are poor, you are in need to God. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hameed. Allah is self-sufficient. He does not need us to come to the mosque tonight. We need Him. We need God. He doesn't need us. If we are coming to the mosque and saying, Al-Ghawth, Al-Ghawth, we are not doing Him a favor. We are doing ourselves a favor, not Him. He is ghaniyu al-hameed. He's self-sufficient. He's happy by himself. He doesn't need our greetings and our worshipings and our prayers. We need it. We need it. So we need God. But not only through du'as. Du'as are very important. And we're going to recite plenty of them tonight, inshallah, together. But there is something next to the du'a that sometimes we forget about. And that is amal, amal salih good deeds, good gestures, good movements. Among these good deeds, reconnect with your parents. Be kinder to your mother and your father. Be nicer to them. Get closer to them after tonight. Now that you are sitting here, think about your mother. Think about your father, if they are still alive. If they are already gone, from this life, Pray for them. Remember them in dua, in Quran, in prayers, in charity, acts of charity. Remember them. If they are still here, get closer to your parents. Respect them more. Love them more. Help them more. And then also your extended family members. Imam Ali at deathbed, at deathbed, what did he say? He said, I want you, Salahu that il bain, afdalu min ammat al salati wa siyam. He said, I want you to reach out to your next of kin, to your relatives, to your aunts, uncles, cousins, extended family member. If there is some tension between you and them, tonight make an intention that from tomorrow I'm going to reach out to them. Even if they hurt me, I'm not going to hurt them because I'm different. Because I'm reading Dua al Joshan al Kabir. Because I'm saying 100 times, Al Ghawth, Al Ghawth, Khalusna min al Nar, Ya Rab. Because I'm insisting on God to forgive me. So I have to be forgiving even to those who hurt me. Who hurt me? It's okay. We are a human being. We commit mistakes. We have failures. We have. Poor choices sometimes. We are not infallibles. Reach out to your next of kin, to your family members. Imam Ali says, this is very important. I want you to be a strong family, strong society, strong community. This is the essence of Islam. Reach out to them. Some people ask, what is the, are the best a'mal in this night? Is it okay to pray? 100 rak'ah, because one of the a'mal that is mentioned in the book of dua, 100 rak'ah. And in each rak'ah you have to recite, inna anzalna. It takes you six, seven hours. It's good. It's good if you can do it. I don't do that. I am here, who has been serving you for 27 years. I have never done the salat in my life, and I'm not going to do it. Because I believe helping people is more important than this. Guiding people is more important than this. Reaching out to people is more important than this. Doing a, a gesture, even if it is a small gesture of goodness and kindness and help, is more important than this prayers. Up and down, up and down, up. What did you do at the end of the day? What did you do? God wants you to be the jewel in your community. The best one in your, the hero of your community. Reaching out to community members. Helping the poor, helping the needy, helping those who have been forgotten, helping some people who have money. They do have money. They have a clothing. They have food. But they have no guidance, no direction. They are lost. They are confused. Helping them. 
reaching out to them. The Prophet says, even a smile is an act of charity. A smile, you don't have to spend money. Smile, smile. Simple smile is an act of goodness and charity. This is important. And God does not look at huge or big quantities. He doesn't look. God looks at qualities. He says, if your amal has ikhlas, sincerity, even if your amal, your work is microscopic, people do not see it, but I see it. I see it, and I appreciate that. You don't have to spend all your money. No, all, all your time. Quality work. Do something, quality. Save a human life. Save the dignity of the people. Save it. There are millions of ways of saving and protecting people and reaching out to them. Begin with your family member. Islahu that il bain. Imam Ali says, Islahu that il bain, bringing families together. If you know two sisters, two brothers, they don't speak to each other. Why? Because the dunya corrupted them, money corrupted them. Try to reach out to them tomorrow. Make a vow tonight. Keep them in your mind tonight. Tomorrow, after tomorrow, during the weekend, reach out to them. Go there, bring them together. Do islah. Fix their, their relationship. Bring their hearts together. And you can do that. You can do that. A husband and wife on the brink, on the verge of divorce. They are contemplating of getting divorced and separating and destroying their kids and their family. Reach out to them. Try to mediate. Bring them together. This is an act of islah. Islahu that il bain. This is better than many of the prayers which are, which we cannot afford really. We cannot afford. Yes, sometimes people sitting at home alone in a cave, in a mountain, you may enjoy the prayers. But when you are in the middle of the society, we have to see the impact of your existence in your community. What is your impact? What is your role? What did you do to the community? Work for the community. So the first type of amana trust is faith and aqeedah and religion. We have to take care of our religion and our faith and our relationship with God. This is a trust. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ لَا تَجُوزُ قَدَمَا عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعٍ By the Lord who controls the soul of his servant Muhammad in his hand, nobody on the day of judgment can step even one step further unless he or she answers seven, four questions. Four questions. Number one. And umrihi fima afna. How did you spend your life? Where did you spend your life? Where? Places of goodness, places where God wants you to be there, or places of disobedience and corruption. Where? You have to provide an answer. Where did you spend these seventy or eight years? Second, wa an jasadihi fima ablah. We have given you. Perfect, healthy body, perfect organs. How did you use them? Did you use them in goodness or in falsehood? Did you destroy these organs? Did you drink alcohol? Did you destroy your liver with alcohol? Your, your lung with smoking? With other destructive substances? Where, how did you spend your, your body? How did you use your body? وَعَنْ جَسَدِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَهِ وَعَنْ مَالِهِ The third question. Your money. Where did it come from? And how did you spend that money? Did you spend it to build yourself and your family and your community or to destroy? How did you spend that money? Many people here in this country, when you tell them don't waste money, the answer is what? Huh? What is their answer? Ahsan. It's my money. It's my money. None of your business, not my money. You have to provide an answer. You cannot tell God tomorrow it's my money. 
God says, no, it's not your money. This is a trust. I have given you this money as a trust. So how did you spend that money? Where? You have to provide an answer. And number four, the most important one. وَعَنْ حُبِّنَا وَوِلَايَتِنَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ About our love and our guardianship, Ahlul Bayt. God has given the Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his family, Imam Ali, Lady Fatima, Imam Hassan and Hussein, this wonderful family, pure family, as a gift, as a role model for mankind, as an inspiration. Did you follow them or you neglected them? You threw them away. This is an answer that you have to provide. Four answers before they allow us even to step, to move a step further.